as an undergraduate in college, I had to decide what to major in, and I chose to double major in biology and kinesiology because I couldn't actually choose between them. Those were two really strong interests of mine. Then I never really did decide between those two directions whether one was better for me over the other. And I had a great summer research experience looking at the, the circadian rhythms of a horseshoe crab. And I decided that I really liked research, and that was a good direction. And I came across a sign for a neuroscience program that really cued into me that I could study these two things at the same time. That was a big revelation for me. I could look at the neural control of movement, which was really the biology of my kinesiology. And so that's how I chose to go into the graduate program that I went into. As a graduate student, I was studying the neural control of movement, and I found this area fascinating. I was, during this time, I was learning so much more about the brain and what happens when the brain goes wrong. I was exposed to the work of Oliver Sacks, who told all of these fascinating stories of the man who mistook his wife for a hat and just these other fabulous stories. I was really interested in brain dysfunction in that way. So I worked with some clinical populations, such as people with cerebellar damage, and learned more and more about what happens when these brain areas go wrong and, and started seeing it for myself. I was able to test these patients and learn about movement through brain disorders. That then led to what I ended up doing um, and what we're still working on now. It turns out that sleep was playing a big role in how these people might learn different movements. And we didn't really know much about it. That research was really brand new, and it was really all in the healthy individual. And so I became interested in whether this is something I should be considering in my research as well. Through that, we discovered that the healthy older adult does not get this benefit from sleep. So before I could really do the work in our clinical populations, we really discovered that the healthy individual is somewhat abnormal too as we get older. And that's then led to the work that we're doing today in this interaction between changes in sleep and changing in, changes in memory in healthy aging. Our current research is really focused on understanding the role of sleep in memory and cognition. In young adults, we've shown that sleep is beneficial not only for enhancing our memories, but also it's very important for making good decisions. So this idea of sleeping on it, we've finally found the scientific evidence that that is indeed true. And we're interested in particular in how changes in sleep across the lifespan might account for changes in cognitive function across the lifespan. That means in young kids who sleep a lot, this could be very useful for the kids that are trying to acquire a lot of new information. But in the older adults who have declines in their sleep as they age, this could account for some of the cognitive dysfunctions they experience. Our most recent discovery was that sleep not only allows us to maintain memories, but it also allows us to process the emotions of our memories. So by sleeping, you strengthen the emotional memories, and you also uh, maintain the emotional tone of the memory. And so what this means to me is that our biological response of going through periods of insomnia following trauma is actually a very healthy response. I think that by going through periods of long wakefulness, it actually decreases the strength of that traumatic memory, but will also decrease that emotional tone that that traumatic memory has should you experience a flashback. And so we think that the work that we're doing will continue to be relevant to uh, areas like PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, and research around that, but also other anxiety disorders. One of the directions I see our research going is finally tying together my two interests. My graduate work actually started um, with working with various different types of neurodegenerative diseases. I was working with cerebellar ataxias, which is degeneration of the cerebellum, and I was working with individuals with Parkinson's disease and individuals with Alzheimer's disease. And with these, with, in combination with recent research that shows that many of these diseases are preceded by sleep disorders, we can now ask the question of whether those sleep disorders in these diseases 
might be the underlying cause of various different cognitive dysfunctions. So can these sleep disorders account for the memory impairments and for the mood disorders that these um, individuals experience? The highlight of my career so far has really been the series of successes we've had with our work on sleep function, and particularly the, to me, the most meaningful of our results are the studies looking at sleep function in the healthy older individual. I think that those results have been surprising, and I feel like they're also very meaningful. And a marker of the success is the recognition that the work has gotten in various media outlets and the distribution that it's gotten. It's not because I enjoy the spotlight around that, but because that really shows how meaningful these results are to a general audience.